Welcome to Power Charting, Wyckoff Nation. Glad you are here. Today, we are going to talk about anatomy of a bear market. If we have time after that, we are going to discuss swing trading stock selection with point and figure. And to help us with that is we have special guest, Johnny Scan. John, welcome. Great to be here, Professor. And Looking uh, forward I, to the show. I always uh, appreciate you being here. It's uh, very, uh, it's very good for me. And uh, so, uh, John, John, and I are going to talk about the characteristics of big bear markets, and we're going to do a case study. And but to start, John, we have a scanning special coming up in July, and it's part four. Uh, tell us about it. Well, this, of course, is the Look Less, See More scanning special. And you and I will be presenting this to the folks uh, who want to see it. The great thing is it's going to be comprehensive in the fact that you don't need to take the prior parts in order to get the most out of this one. Although I do recommend you take a look at stock charts material on that. Here's our uh, instructor's page, our dates. So we're starting July 14th. We'll have three sessions every Thursday for three sessions after that. We're gonna look at some real interesting wave scanning, counter wave, acceleration, deceleration. We're gonna anchor and tether scans. And then we're gonna do some real interesting work on watch list and portfolio management, which I think is a subject dear to your heart, Professor. Is that correct? Oh my gosh, this is, I'm very excited about this. Session three uh, is really what my career was about. And uh, with the help of uh, Johnny Scan, we are going to really uh, create some incredible tools for uh, enhancing portfolio management for all of us. So that's just very, uh, very special. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, John's done a lot of really good work, more, you know, more so than me. I've, I've been working with him on the portfolio management process, but he's come up with some great scans for us. So this is going to be a great session. And if, if they take part four first, John, is that like reading the last chapter of a novel and getting all the answers uh, before you read the novel? No, because we've got great material that is going to be uh, independently accessible the whole way through. So uh, really, really interesting stuff that we've got. Fantastic. Well, here, a chart you've all seen prior, consumer price index with a point figure analysis. I'm not going to spend any, any time on it. We had made the case because we had gone into the area of the uh, initial objectives that we right here, I don't know why I can't get my little pen to work here, but um, we had uh, made the case here that um, we had fulfilled this count objective initial one. Higher ones are uh, possible out there in the future. We all know that you can't predict time with point and figure, only uh, useful for extent. This is this yellow uh, area here counted the pink area is the higher counts. We had a main number of 8.6, and uh, we were making the case that we may start to taper off from those levels. And so this chart here is crude oil. And I'm gonna go through these quickly because we spent more time on them last week, but I'm coming to a point. And that is uh, we had this initial count that we did back in 2020. This count took us up to 92 to 112, and we had three days above that in a climax, have been range bound ever since with a throw over here recently. And here is what has happened since. So let me uh, clean this up. And John, look at the, what has occurred in the last week and a half, two weeks. We The yellow shaded area is the 112.92 count two attempts, really three attempts to upthrust that area and a failure. I think these counts are good for the time being. And look at the weakness that's come in 
that has taken crude oil down here. What do you think? Well, hopefully relief for the folks at home. Uh, gas is just crazy, and it's related, of course, to the cost of crude. Yes. And uh, we did break back into the channel you've got represented there. In fact, there's a subsidiary channel um, really starting in mid-April and running through June that has its own characteristic to it, too. And um, right right across there, yeah. About that. yeah. <clears throat> so we and broke the, through that channel and we upthrusted it there a little bit. Yeah. And uh, hopefully that's a sign of things to come and movement to, movement down. I, I think that when you can get a sharp reversal, clearly a buying climax here, automatic reaction that sets up a range bound condition where you have resistance, support. Look at how well this 92 level has supported crude. And now uh, I think we have a real shot at being able to get back into the channel, back to the 92 support level. Maybe we can even get down to the bottom of the channel, which would be uh, remarkably um, uh, helpful, I think, to uh, everybody, consumers, everyone. And we know that crude oil just infects every aspect of the CPI. So uh, I think CPI could moderate some. This is a chart we did on gasoline, this green count. Uh, we have not achieved these large base count objectives. Uh, hopefully we never do, but uh, the market never tells, offers me a, a choice in these things. <clears throat> so uh, these counts are possible. These are wholesale counts for uh, objectives for gasoline. But this area here is quite interesting because uh, we have a count that was uh, being approached. Well, let's look at that. And so this count went 430 to 480. Look, we climaxed into the 430, tested it, turned down off of that. And uh, this, this chart down here is really the same chart. It just shows an accumulation structure you can't see in, in this chart. But uh, these two count objectives both confirm each other. So uh, here we are hitting these objectives and uh, attempting to turn down. Well, what has happened since? So here's the 430 objective, the minimum objective that we counted. Here's our reaccumulation. Look what's happened, John. Uh, 430, test of 430, and then a turn down with a gap and then weakness uh, right back into this range bound structure. Classic Wyckoff characteristics. What do you think? I'm just amazed that you do these counts before the price action happens. It's like having a crystal ball. It's amazing. You know, I want everybody to have that crystal ball. I want all of our people. I want the nation to have it. So, so, so don't, don't tell anybody else, but friends of why coffeeans who are here for this, you are welcome into our community, our club. Okay. Last thing I want to show is uh, this 10-year uh, US Treasury yield. I'm going through these really fast. So I apologize. We have talked about these in the past. This account that goes back to 2019, one box reversal swing trading count, beautiful count, perfectly hits the 340 yield objective. And we had said that we thought that this could be the uh, conclusion of the advance, at least for the time being, resistance across here. And we've talked about this a long time. As soon as it came out of here, we started to discuss this uptrending action. And so look, John, we're up to this 340 area. And it's, uh, um, I think, especially with CPI, it's possible that this could be, for the time being, could be um, a conclusion of the advance. That would be welcome. <clears throat> Absolutely. And then notice in this trend channel here, how these throwovers, this one was very brief. Now look what happened to yields. Look at them dropping here. Let me clean this up. And you can see the uh, decline back into the channel. And look at the, as Phil Sims would say, the alacrity of the decline. And uh, so you can see here the uh, uh, very steep decline back in, possible support at this area, which is around 2.6. Uh, 
yield, that would be a long way down. And uh, that would be welcome also to see yields come down some. Your thoughts, John? Well, it would be it would be a, a blessing for people. There's so many instruments that are priced on the 10 year, it's related to mortgage uh, pricing and things of that nature. So it really would be helpful for the people if these numbers <clears throat> came back down. Absolutely agree. This chart over here is just the yield curve. We've been flirting with a zero yield curve, a flat yield curve, largely the result of very high and rising interest rates. You can see that the two year here, 10 year here. And so uh, becoming very flat, this is a recession watch type indicator. The problem is, let's say we get GDP negative here in the second quarter, that would give us a technical recession. Keep in mind that that's a lagging indicator. The market already knows it. The market's been going down as the market's as the economy's been weakening. So when at times, especially in bear markets, uh, like the announcement of a recession, if we do in fact get one, we don't know at this point, but we're pretty close to zero on growth. Uh, that could result in a um, uh, that could result. Uh, in a potential rally just because the market has been declining into the bad news. Now here, this is uh, something I, I'm not gonna talk about here, but this is uh, a blog I did back in 2015, read up on these distribution schematics. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still losing my voice, but um, these are, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about those later today. And so now into the meat of our presentation, which is to talk about uh, the character of bear markets, the character of bear market rallies. <clears throat> and so let's go back and look at a historic case study. And so John, what we see here is this is actually 2000 to 2003. And this is a classic large distribution here and then a markdown and then the markdown uh, concludes with a, a large accumulation that brings us a new bull market later, 2003, 2004. So here, the thing we really want to discuss is that you have to prepare for a bear market with distribution. Then you get a outright breakdown into a uh, decline, and then what are the characteristics of the declines as you go through? And so uh, I heartily encourage everyone to go do this analysis and uh, look at some bear markets, 73, 74, 2000, 2003, 2007, 2009, and on and on and on. There's just lots of them. And uh, so, but here, note that declines typically end with climaxes. And so here you can see the uh, uh, trading range or the uh, uh, declining uh, trend channel. It's not really a trading range, it's a declining one. So then a climax, very sharp rally. Look at this, 22%. Then another decline. Look at the climax here. Look at the acceleration into the final lows and the reversal off of these. These are extremely hard to trade, John. And look at, and you had made a good comment when we were talking about preparing for this episode about how the advance occurs. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, certainly the advances are so sharp that for the average investor, by the time you get comfortable going back in, you're the guy holding the bag. It's just very sharp, come down a long ways, and boom, once you're in, the CEO senses that and sells back out. So you can see here the um, climax, very sharp advance, then hardly anything comes in the uh, second phase of the advance. As John was saying here, very sharp advance, hardly anything comes in the second part. Look at this distribution that unfolds here. And then each one of these, John, is even more intense and larger than the prior. So the look, look at, compare this decline to this decline. 
And now this decline to this one, I mean, these are just wicked. And uh, people that think that they can buy a selling climax <clears throat> are, you know, I mean, you've really got to be good at what you're doing to, to buy a selling climax because the tendency is to think, oh, this is the selling climax right here. Or maybe it's right here. Or maybe it's right here. And same thing. Look, what if this was considered to be the selling climax low and then this one and here's the test of that area right here look at how much decline came after that this is pretty painful stuff and so uh it takes a real uh a skill and fortitude to trade these and what really drives the advances john short covering so mm -hmm. this is panic buying where people are are losing a lot of money very quickly in the advance so uh, this also says a short shorting is difficult to do in a bear market. So uh, uncertainty, <clears throat> untrustworthiness of price action seems really to be the watchword of these big moves down. So much going on, hard to predict, and you can get ripped real quickly. Yes. And we had had an interesting discussion prior to the start here about what John asked the question, well, what is it? He knew the answer, but he was asking a rhetorical question about what is it that causes this immense volatility on the way down? And it's a very important point because here's this distribution and there's a couple different ways we could label it. <clears throat> and uh, so this is just a, a, you know, a possible way to label this is either way it's distribution. And the thing to keep in mind is that in distribution, who's selling out of their holdings that they've held all the way up in the bull run? The composite operator, the very large informed interest that bought stocks at much lower prices. They are jettisoning these stocks at very high prices, locking in their profits, going to cash, understanding that a bear market is coming. <clears throat> and they are uh, uh, not any longer supporting the market and as a result of that there's no large interest to support stock prices on the way down the main characters and the main participants in the decline who are in these markets is the public public tends to be in these and institutions that hold public assets and so we do not want to think like the public we want to think like the co so we want to be defensive, care, careful, and so on, on the way down and hold lots and lots of cash and uh, be prepared for the accumulation where there is immense value in the opportunity to benefit from a new bull run. Look at the difference in the way this advances uh, functioning versus this decline over here. John, your thoughts? Well, it's a tale of... Uh two different aspects of the market. Really, we have immense volatility coming down, 24% moves, 25% moves, uh, huge lower tails, big volume, and then things gradually transition. We begin to move over the dotted green line, which that's an important line on the chart, is it not, Professor? There, look at this. There's only one place where it can get above the declining 39 week and it's very briefly. So this is such a useful and important moving average in my mind. Most people don't look at things that long-term, but they really are prophetic here. What are your thoughts on a moving average of that length? Oh, I, I think the long-term moving averages, uh, I use them all the time to identify the primary trends. And so here, look, Look at this uptrending 39 all through here. And it turns right here. Like right there is where the 39 turns down and pr prices below it. Well, look what happens after that. So, I mean, what a great trend following, a uh, very straightforward trend following indicator, very valuable. I also use the same exact indicator on relative strength. And I use them in combination with each other, which we've talked about on the show before. So uh, really uh, important stuff. 
And but then we'll uh, take a look at in the scanning course too, right? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. we're gonna we're gonna put that in scans. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, which is what I do. I, I have uh, scanning tools that I've been using forever that scan just on those characteristics and categorize what's up and what's down. And in those, and so we're going to show how this can be done in the scanning tools at stockcharts.com. Just, just to make a point, uh, look at this decline in the uptrend Look at this decline in the uptrend, this decline, and this decline. And uh, what could we generally conclude from these on the way up, John? Higher low finishes, less volatility, um, dancing with the 39, but um, it's enough to raise your hair a little bit, I'd say, but it's nowhere near what we see on the flip side of the distributional uh, downtrend the bear market phase it's just completely different it, it can be that, scary but completely yeah different. It, it's just a, yeah exactly but it's a sign that the large interests are supporting the market and accumulating it on the way up it's that's a brilliant your point is exactly spot on and so here look at these schematics notice how there's this beautiful characteristic correlation of these points uh, on the way, uh, all the way through here. Now, your labeling may change slightly uh, because of the, the unique conditions inside of this, but uh, there's a couple of different ways to label this and they're all legitimate. They're all good. They're all tactically valuable. Look at the higher lows through here and the lower highs which is like a hinge. Look at this, higher lows, lower highs, breaks down out of the hinge just as occurred here in the schematic. I mean, these schematics are built this way because they're relevant. And so uh, I literally uh, would put these up on my wall in my office and would look at them all the time relative to actual uh, goings on in the markets. And I encourage you all to do that. So, uh, okay, John, let's move on. Here's the same chart. Oh, one thing I wanna point out, we are gonna run out of time. So we're gonna talk about uh, point and figure um, stock selection uh, next time. But these lows are occurring right into quarter end. And so, and then year end peaks, same thing right into quarter end. And so uh, just be really careful around the ends of quarters, especially if you are a short selling speculator, because this is oftentimes where climaxes occur, and very sharp advances and so on. And I'm not encouraging people to short stocks at all, but I'm just saying that uh, you gotta be like really careful and at quarter ends. And then look at, the family resemblance here, John, between the S&P uh, then and now. This is now, that's the prior. And I encourage you to do this kind of analysis on uh, all the bear market distributional tops. So, okay, so we have two minutes left. And uh, let me just go right to this chart and point out, we talked about quarter end. So here, quarter end chart notes. Uh, here, look at this quarter end here. Quarter end, look at this up thrust right into the end of the year, the final top in the bull. Quarter end here. And look where we are now. And note the panic selling that we're getting uh, here. Uh, on the way down with the throw under of this big trend channel, oversold condition. So we got to be really careful here because uh, the, of the volatility. Can the market attempt to hold and rally or does it just keep accelerating? Entirely possible it could do that. So panic selling, vol look at the volume spike here on quad witch witching right there. Um, your final thoughts, John? 
I'm, I'm with you 100%, Professor. And uh, all the dominoes are lining up. Yeah, I just think that you have to be really careful. I think it's uh, for most people trading bear markets, it's better just to hold cash. You have to be a student of markets. If you want to be in this business for a long, long time, you got to stay focused on these markets and bears, even if you're not trading them. You're holding cash, you're defensive, you have small positions, trade small if you're going to trade, keep stops tight, have good stops, and uh, trade really small, very small percentage of your portfolio. That's advice I would give you in this environment. And, uh, and But at the same time, be a student of this market as it goes through these ebbs and flows, because you're going to learn a lot. And eventually, the key is, is you want to be in this business for 40 years. And uh, so that would be my, that would be what I would do. That's what I did do. And uh, I'll leave it at that. John, your, your final thought. No, no, you certainly need capital to play another day. Ah, perfectly said. Excellent point to end on. Okay, folks, thank you so much. Uh, point and figure stock selection next week. And we'll see you then. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.